Welcome to the Westside Investors Network. Win your community of investing knowledge for growth. This is the Real Estate Professionals Investing Podcast for real estate professionals by real estate professionals. This show is focused on the next step in your career, investing. Thank you for listening. And please, if you like our content, rate us on your podcast provider. Just a quick disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any shares or securities, make or consider any investments or take any other action. And now, AJ and Chris Shepard. Welcome back to another episode of the Deal Deep Dive segment on the West Side Investors Network podcast. I'm your host, Trent Werner. In this segment, our featured guests will share their unique stories on a specific deal they've invested in. We will dive deep into finding the deal, financing the deal, writing an offer, and the due diligence. Do us a solid and smash that subscribe button, leave us a rating, and share this episode. And now, let's dive deep. All right, welcome back to the West Side Investors Network podcast. Today, we have a deal deep dive with Pete Reese. Pete is the president of RealVest Properties. He's the host of Turning Profit podcast. Pete specializes in land flipping. He does dabble in some other real estate investing ventures. Pete's been investing since 2000 in real estate and has other businesses outside of real estate. We're going to focus today on the land flipping side of things. Pete, thanks for joining me. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that intro? No, I appreciate the intro and thanks for having me, Trent. Of course. So, I mean, we talked about it a little bit before we got started, but land flipping is something that I mean, I'm pretty unfamiliar with, for a lack of better words. Can you describe the land flipping process and how you got into that? Sure. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, before I got into it, I knew nothing about it as well. But kind of what the main business model is, is we buy properties off market. We use direct mail to generate all of our leads. So we actually send out offers to these property owners. So we buy them off market. We close on them with our own cash. And then we do some minor value add stuff sometimes, like we'll do some clearing of, you know, some paths, we'll do a perk test, we'll do, you know, something like that generally. And then we'll list it on the market and sell it right away, hopefully. So our average hold time is really only about 60 days. And so these are really quick turn properties. And I know that it's most people, when you tell them you sell, you know, you buy and sell land, they kind of think in their minds probably that this is a long term you know, situation that you're buying a big piece of land in the path of progress somewhere. And then, you know, one day it's going to be worth a lot more than what it is now. But this is completely opposite of that in that it's just real short-term holds. So, And what attracted you to the land aspect of things instead of, you know, flipping houses? Mm -hmm. And I've done flipping houses before. You know, that's kind of how we got our start in real estate investing really is flipping houses. So I'm familiar with that side of things and I knew what to do. And I just didn't want to get back into that whole thing with the renovations. And it's just more of a stressful business. I think that that side of things rather than what we're doing now. I mean, this business is what kind of appealed to me is I would read some anecdotes online of people talking about, hey, I bought this property for 10 grand and I sold it for 30 grand. And you know, I bought this one for five and I sold it for 20. That kind of initially really piqued my interest. I mean, I didn't really have a way to verify those types of things, just kind of people talking on the internet, but it was very interesting to me. I thought, you know, those kind of numbers were obviously a really great return on your investment. And I thought, well, I feel like I'm pretty good at seeing the value in certain things. So I thought like that was within my skill set. And I figured, you know, I could give it a shot and see how it goes. And, you know, if it completely crashes and burns, then it's not like I'm, you know, buying million dollar properties where I lose money on or something like that. So that's what appealed to me. And how did you, I mean, you said you flipped houses to begin with, but when did you convert to focusing solely on land flipping? Yeah, only been in land flipping for about two years. And we actually resold our first property using this model in March of 2021. So that was our first land flip that we did. Ended out 2021 at about 1.25 million in revenue and about 50% gross profit margin. So on average, we were able to take a property, whatever we invested into it, and double it and net that amount after you know closing costs and commissions and everything like that. So that was 2021, our first you know kind of partial year in the business. 2022, we did about 3.5 million in revenue and just under 50% gross profit margin 
in 2022 and 2023 i want to get you know 10 million or more so it's been a fast ride and trying to scale as quickly as i can and put the team members in place that help me get there of course and sounds like it's growing fairly quickly which is awesome yeah yeah Um, i'm excited about it yeah when you talk about flipping land are you going in and adding utilities to bare lots are you clearing trees just tell me about that a little bit more yeah, most of the value add stuff that we do is pretty minimal. For instance, a lot of these properties that we buy are at this point, you know, five to 10 acres plus, mostly 10 acres is what I'm buying now. And a lot of these properties have been owned by the same owner, may have been for quite some time. And a lot of these people have either never been on the property or haven't been on the property in a long time or certainly not doing anything with it in most cases. And these properties are overgrown. You can't even, you know, some of these are so thick with brush, you can't even really walk onto the property. So that's one of the minor things that we do that really kind of adds a lot of value. We'll hire a crew to go out there and clear some paths so people could, you know, potential buyers could actually go on the property, walk it and see what it is that they're they're potentially buying. Obviously, we can see a lot from satellite images and drone shots and everything like that. But you know, be, being able to actually walk on the property is kind of kind of crucial for a potential buyer. <laughs> so we do that a lot. Sometimes we'll do perk tests. You know, if it's it's definitely a lot where I, where we know someone's going to want to build a house on it, maybe at some point, then we'll definitely get a perk test done if there's no sewer nearby. And, and most of these properties, there's no sewer nearby because it's they're pretty rural. So we'll do that. And Sometimes surveys, sometimes we'll do minor subdivision and a lot of subdivisions. And in a lot of these areas, that means, you know, you can split it into five lots or less. It simply takes hiring a surveyor to go out there, do it on paper, and then sub- record it with the county. And then you're, you've got your subdivision. <laughs> so, so, and then what we'll do is then we'll sell off the lots individually in that case. But, okay. but yeah, most of the time, pretty minor stuff. And sometimes we don't do anything to the properties. They don't need anything, you know, no real value add stuff can be done. We're just focused on buying it at the right price and then marketing it, you know, on the market with the broker and pricing it, you know, slightly below market. So it sells quickly. That was a question I had is because every time I talk about lots and I actually have one listed for sale in Oregon and it's been, you know, it's been quite a while, but I just assume that lots take a long time to sell. But in your case, it doesn't sound, sound that way. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty aggressive with our list prices. There's a couple of things that go into it. You know, we're pretty aggressive with our list prices and we focus on only buying good properties. So if it's a good property and it's priced slightly below market, we know it's going to sell. Especially the other thing that we take into consideration is the market itself in that particular area. For instance, we look for markets that are where there's a good amount of activity and there's a good balance. You know, if there's a for instance, a uh, county and it's got, you know, a hundred listings between five and ten acres, you know, and over that last twelve months, you know, twenty properties have sold, you know, between five and ten acres. Then we know that there's big oversupply in that market, and that's if we are going to buy there. And sometimes we will buy in those areas, but it's got to be ultra cheap, so then we can be the cheapest thing on the market when we go to resell it. So we look for those markets where there's more of a balance, you know, the sales in the last 12 months pretty equal to the amount of listings that are there in that range of course and now here's a word from our sponsor get things done while you're on the move learn more about working with a virtual assistant through off-site professionals it's a great way to get all the things done that you need to get done have freedom in your time and streamline your life by automating your business. Stop spending time on the tasks that you can delegate and start spending more time on your superpower. Call us today at 503-446-3177 or visit our website at offsiteprofessionals.com. Uptown Syndication is now offering a syndication coaching program for you to take your real estate portfolio to the next level. This is your opportunity to have experienced syndicators, AJ and Chris Shepard, coach you on your way to controlling your real estate investing future. Our coaching program will provide you with the tools and framework needed to begin syndicating real estate in your target market. Go to uptownsyndication.com today to learn more. Let's talk about a specific deal. Do you have a specific land flip in mind that we can discuss, kind of dive into the numbers today? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here's one that we just did. We just closed this year already. We bought it in December, closed it in December. 
and paid about 60000 for it with all closing costs and everything considered. And the property was about 30 acres. Yeah, about 30 acres. And it had like a pond on it. It was actually like a man-made pond. Someone at one point was digging sand, like mining sand off of the property. And it kind of made this kind of cool, big man-made pond on the property that is filled up with groundwater in that area. So we bought it for about 60000 put it on the market right away. It really didn't need anything. Actually, I was going to have the lot partially cleared, but as soon as we put it on the market, you know, we got offers right away before land clearing people could even get out to the property. And it ended up getting under contract within a couple of days of being on the market for above our list price. I think we listed it for 150, got under contract for 175. And then two weeks later, it was closed cash buyer. So on that property, we ended up netting something like 94000 in you know gross profit on that deal. We owned it a few weeks. I only paid sixty thousand for the property and netted you know ninety four thousand in profit. That was a pretty good deal. That's a really good deal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hear sixty thousand for a lot, and then I hear thirty acres. Is all your investments in California? Or do you go out of state? Oh no, it's mostly out of state. Yeah, okay. like other part of the country, mostly East Coast is where we're doing now. We do some other areas we're trying to get established in, but. That's been where we've gotten the most traction, kind of all the states along the East Coast. And yeah, so we're just trying to, you know, buy right. And these are rural areas. So it's not like, you know, that's not metropolitan areas. So you're thinking like 2,000 an acre, that's pretty good. That's pretty good price, you know. But it's, <laughs> yeah. in, it's just a math equation. Like retail might be, you know, 5,000 an acre. So whenever you can buy like that and, you know, where the values are, you know, at then, where the retail values are at, then it's just simply, you know, you make money when you buy, I guess they say. <laughs> Absolutely. So how I know you said you're using mailers and marketing, direct to property owner marketing. How are you determining your target markets on who to send these direct marketing items to? Yeah, we pretty much use a company called Datatree. It's a first American company. So they've got databases of all the property owners in the United States pretty much. And we'll take a look at a particular, you know, we'll do it by county level sometimes. So particular county, we know this area is pretty good. We may have done some stuff there or we've looked at kind of the sales activity. So we're pretty confident it's a pretty good area to mail to. And then we'll just kind of do some basic screens like I'll pull a list that's 10 acres plus vacant land. We'll scrub out kind of the sellers that we know are not going to ever sell to us like the railroads or the utilities or the city, the county owned, you know, schools, all these different sellers where we know that, you know, they would look at our letter and, you know, throw it out. And then, you know, we just put together some averages for that county. So for instance, in that county, if we know that the retail prices are 5,000 an acre, we might offer, you know, 2,000 an acre on the properties. And we'll just do kind of a big mail merge. It's a two-page letter that we send out. It's a letter on the first page kind of explaining who we are, what we do, and what we could do for them. And then the second page is actually an offer. And it's pretty basic one-page offer. But I think it lets them know that we're serious, you know, and it gets the phone ringing, basically. So sometimes the phone rings and people are angry that we offered such a low price on their property. (laughs) But some people are, you know, motivated to sell and ready to put a deal together. And sometimes we get the sometimes we get the offer prices wrong because it's all based off of averages and each property is different. So they might call in and say, "Hey, you know, I think my property is worth more. What can we do to put a deal together?" And then we'll look at it in depth and we'll see, you know, like, "Okay, we can go up to this amount and it still makes sense for us." Or, you know, sometimes we'll look at it and say, "Oh, we were too high. This property is landlocked. It has these other issues and we can't pay, you know, exactly what we offered on the property." And in those cases we would, you know, renegotiate and see if they're interested or decide that we don't want to move forward at any price. I understand all that, but are you just throwing a dart at the map and saying, well, let's check out this market? Or do you, I know you said East Coast. I'm assuming you have some sort of way to narrow in these rural East Coast areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically we'll look at all the counties and all the states that we deal with, you know, like anywhere from New York down to Florida, basically. And right now that's where a lot of our focus is and we'll look at all these counties and there's some tools that we can use to kind of research these counties where it'll pull the data it'll tell us you know like what that ratio is between 
for sale and sold properties within that range. So that's kind of the first real filter that we do. Like if we see that there's a big glut of inventory in this particular county or something like that, we'll skip it because we know that if we're going to send mail there, we'll get potential deals, but we don't want to be, you know, our business model is all about speed. So if we get potential deals there, it's going to be tough for us to resell. So that's what we're always keeping in mind. So we use that basic criteria to filter out, you know, counties and places that we don't want to send to. But then we just kind of systematically go through those states, try to establish new areas, try to establish really good agents to help us on the ground Did that because that's kind of a good big part of our process as well. We were trying to find top quality agents and brokers to deal with that are specialists in land that can really help us during the purchase process and then resell the property for us as well. You know, like we're always reaching out to them and saying, hey, you know, we could buy this property. What do you think? You know, what do you think you could resell it for? Obviously, we have our own ideas, but it's great to have a local opinion from someone who's an expert and it's kind of invaluable to us. Right. They give us their opinions and then we put a deal together, we buy it, they get the listing to resell it. And then when you, I mean, when you guys are able to complete a deal in a certain area, are you trying to double down on that specific market and keep going with it? Or do you just want it done? Let's move on. No, we definitely try to take those particular areas. And when we get some evidence that it's working, we get some good people on the ground. We're trying to get as many deals as we can in those areas. So it's almost like establishing like a different location for your company, like a different franchise or branch or something like that. It's a matter of, you know, when you find a good area, we try to do more and more and more there. So. Right. Okay. Okay. And so I know you've been doing this for a couple of years now. What's been the biggest challenge other than just getting it going? What's been the biggest challenge with this business model? Well, the biggest thing that's the most frustrating thing for me, honestly, is the amount of time it takes to actually go through the title search process. We close all of our properties through a title company or escrow or attorney, you know, whatever is standard for that state. And a lot of times these title searches just take a while. So, you know, a lot of times we'll get a property under contract and, you know, it'll take way longer. I'd rather close those, you know, and I know if it's a good one, I'd rather close it in, you know, 10 days, two weeks, something like that. But sometimes we have to wait 30 days. Or sometimes the title search takes longer and we're, you know, 45 to 60 days. I think that's the biggest struggle. So it just takes a while to get that momentum built. So that would be my biggest frustration with it. But once you get a big enough pipeline of deals coming through, then that's less of a problem. But to get ramped up to that stage where you get those consistent closings that's kind of frustrating to get to that point so and you said you're buying these properties cash are you just using saved money or you have capital partners is it all how do you finance these yeah at this point i've only done three deals with partners everything else has been cash so we started out with an amount and then we Mm -hmm. just kept the interesting thing about this business is it accelerates your inventory and your cash that you have can accelerate pretty quickly so at this point, I mean, we've got our portfolio value of our, you know, land holdings that we've got that are either in escrow or, you know, for sale is like 2.7 million. And we started out, you know, we may have contributed at the beginning, maybe a hundred thousand or something. And then it just continues to like snowball really, really fast. You like, know, when you're doubling your money every, you know, <laughs> hopefully, you know, in theory, every 60 days or so it, doing the math, it just starts to get a little, it starts to get crazy, but We did do three partner deals and that's the thing too in this business. So if you don't have cash to do your your own deals, what they'll there's money partners that are around that will basically they'll send the money to close the transaction. They'll send everything. You know, you don't have to contribute any of your own money. And then when the property sells, you split the profits. So 50-50 generally. So interesting. We did that on a large deal, like three hundred fifteen thousand dollar purchase price, and then we ended up selling that property for five ninety five, and we both split a good amount of money, and hundred sixty thousand. And that one, you know, it's just on the market now, but we anticipate it's going to hopefully double our money on that. Very nice, very nice. So we've talked about your biggest frustration. What's the biggest takeaway you've gotten from these last couple of years? And I know you have other businesses, and you've done other ventures before what's your biggest takeaway on the positive side since starting this i think the positive side is it's really kind of a simple business in a way especially if you can get good or if you're not good if you could get people on your team that are good at evaluating properties 
And then you can, you know, you make money when you buy. So you get all these opportunities to buy properties. And if you be confident and understand the value that you're buying, then you're instantly creating value there. You know, every time you close on a good deal, you know, you're, you know, basically increasing your net worth. So the other thing is too, that how fast that things can accelerate. And the fact that we're selling these properties so quickly allows us to really accelerate our earnings. So it's completely different than, you know, buying rental properties or something like that, where you're just getting that consistent income over time. This is active cash flow, active, you know, cash type business. Of course, of course. Well, those were my questions for the day. Do you have anything else you want to share? I know we talked about your podcast. I'd love to hear more about that. And if you want to share something about that and also where people can connect with you and hear more from you. Sure. Yeah. We just launched a podcast. And when I say we, it's myself and my wife. So we've been doing our real estate investing for together for quite some time. She's, you know, kind of the back end of her business at this point. And I'm kind of the front end of the land business, but both have our important roles. So we launched a podcast called Turning Profit. And that's all about real estate investing. So we're talking about land flipping on there because obviously that's what we do. But we're also bringing on lots of other guests talking about all the other business models that you could work on in real estate investing. There's a lot of different ways to make money. And we try to highlight those different ways on there. So we just launched it at the beginning of January here. So we're really excited about that. And then we've got a website, turningprofit.com. And on there, it features our podcast, but also we go heavily into our business specifically. I know a lot of people haven't heard much about land flipping and they're kind of interested in the business model. So each month I do a monthly income report where I break down you know, how much revenue we did that month, profit, you know, all the deals that we did that month, I break them down one by one and what went well on those, what didn't go well. Just try to give as much insight as possible as I can into everything. You know, When I started, there just wasn't that type of thing out there. So it would have been really valuable for me to see what kind of deals were possible. You know, like what are the typical purchase prices? What are the typical, you know, profit margins on these deals? And that's what I did with that. And so we've got all of 2021, I mean, 2022 up there, monthly income reports, and then I'm doing them every month going forward here as well. So awesome. Well, Pete, thank you again for joining us today. I know I learned a bunch. I say this every episode, it seems like, but like (laughs) I said at the beginning, I've never really even heard of land flipping. So this is awesome conversation to have. And I know our listeners will get the same out of it. So thank you. Well, thank you, Trent. I really appreciate you having me on here. Of course. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Real Estate Professionals Investing Podcast on WIN, your community of investing knowledge for growth. We hope that this episode has increased your knowledge and added value to your path to freedom. If you would, please take a second to rate us so that we can get more great investors to interview. If you or someone that you know wants to be on, please visit westsideinvestors.com and fill out our form to be on the show. Thank you again and enjoy your day.